What do negative interest rates do to our financial system? Well, if you look at what's happened to the way European banks are valued, um, most of them are valued at well below uh, tangible net assets. Uh, and that, I'm not sure, is a sustainable position for the long run because it does constrain the bank's ability to raise capital and eventually to lend. I think the question is whether the ECB missed an opportunity to, quote, normalize interest rates in the past. I mean, I can see that at the moment they're very nervous about the economic prospect in Europe, and it would look to me as though they're more nervous than the figures seem to suggest, uh, because I think we were thinking about a year ago that the ECB would follow the Fed in beginning to edge interest rates up, but now they've clearly gone into yeah. the other direction. So they must be more worried about the stability of the European economy and the robustness of the growth prospect than the rest of us are. And I don't quite know what it is they are looking at that is causing them to be this anxious. Sir Friedrich Hayek, not Sir Friedrich, excuse me, the laureate Friedrich Hayek, darkened the door at yeah. your LSE a few years back. <laughs> he would say, clear the market. Why can't continental Europe clear the market in a more Anglo-American way to get to scale, to get to better financial results, to get to a better book value, to boost the spirit of lending in Europe? I think if you look at this over a, over a decade or 15 years, what we thought we were seeing in the run-up to the financial crisis was a gradual development of a genuine European capital market, with banks lending across border, acquiring banks across border, etc. Then we had the financial crisis and the Eurozone crisis, which caused everybody to retreat. And the big banks that owned banks in Greece or Bulgaria or whatever pulled out and stopped lending across border, and the ECB became the lender of last resort, if you like. So people would only deposit with the ECB because they were very anxious about the creditworthiness of the other banks in countries which they didn't really understand so well. That led to banking union, and that was supposed to solve the problem. In other words, that there would be a central authority which approved the banks, and if the central authority was happy with them, then you should be confident. In theory, that occurs, but unfortunately, we still don't have a deposit insurance scheme for Europe. So the banking union is, you know, timber-framed, not yep. steel-framed at the moment. So that what we've not yet got is a return to a pan-European banking and capital market. And until the... ECB is able to implement a deposit insurance scheme, which they want to do, but which the Germans and one or two other countries are opposed to it, then I think you're still going to see this lack of a genuine European financial market, and that's a right. really big obstacle. So is that the obstacle to consolidation? Yes. It, is that, you know, the, the fact that Deutsche Bank didn't merge with Commerzbank, is that also an obstacle to, to cross-border? Well, I personally think that's a slightly different question because it's not clear to me that the Deutsche Commerz uh, Bank would have necessarily solved right. the Deutsche Bank problem, if you see what I mean. But that was in, really in yeah. Germany, so I don't think that's the same issue. No, the issue is, can you accept that there will be lending a proper genuine <clears throat> European interbank market which has, which has folded up in the, European, in the Eurozone crisis and still has not yet reopened and still people are actually retrenching across border in yeah. Europe. And that was not what was supposed to happen. The Europe was supposed to develop a banking market and a capital market. You've seen today the three finance ministers of Netherlands, Germany and France have come once again said we've got to have a capital markets union and we don't have that.